Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be for all my makeup newbies out there and all of my beginners. This video was so requested to me by like family friends, clients, like everybody has been asking me to do this video. So today is finally the day that I'm sitting down with you and I am giving you all of my must have products for your drugstore beginner starter kit. So I think that I have pretty much everything, like a full face here. Some of the things, if you're a brand new person to makeup or just starting out, you probably won't need or want, but I wanted to give you guys a full face, like from base to eyes to brows, the whole nine, so that way if you are interested in really cultivating like a really nice makeup collection, but you don't quite have the budget to shop like high end, you'll have some really, really great drugstore options right here. And it just goes to show that you do not need to spend millions of dollars on makeup. There's a ton of awesome stuff at the drugstore. They've really, really stepped it up in the last few years. I remember when I was just getting into makeup, like it was not, it was not cute. Like wet and wild frosted lipsticks and stuff like, mm -mm. But now we really have so many great options. Just a quick disclaimer, I did try and pick just one product for each category as kind of like a, you have to have this. This is like the number one thing that you should have in your kit just to try and make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand and not get overwhelmed because I know it can be super, super overwhelming just walking the aisles in like Walgreens or CVS and you're like, I don't even know where to start. But there are a few things where I have more than one option, but I will of course explain why I like each one and what I think each one would be great for, who it would suit best. But other than that, I'm trying to make this as easy and simple. I'm really, really excited to do this video for you guys. It has been a long time coming. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm just gonna run through these products like I would apply them to my face just so that way you guys can follow along pretty easily. Um, first up we have primers and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge drug store primer gal I have a very very hard time finding ones that I like there are some out there I'm just not crazy about them and truthfully if you're on a budget or if you're just starting out I don't know that primer is something that you necessarily need there's a lot of people out there that don't believe in primer I think that if you're just starting out but you have a really nice skincare routine and your skin is really nicely prepped you could probably skip primer you don't necessarily need it unless you're using it for like longevity or something like that but if you do want to test out a primer my favorite is the elf poreless putty primer i do think that this is a pretty good dupe for the tatcha silk canvas so if you were interested in trying that out but you just don't have the funds to go out and buy a primer that fancy trust me i get it it's pretty bougie this is a really really great alternative and i did just see that they are coming out or they may have already come out with by the time this video goes up i think they have a mattifying one and a hydrating one so these are really really awesome i don't necessarily love like the silicone primers in like the pump that elf has to offer but i think this is a really really great one it just smooths everything out really nicely it is a little bit hydrating but does not make me greasy or oily so if you have oily skin like i do I have like oily to combo. I can still totally use this, get away with it, and it does not impact my foundation negatively. Really nice texture. You need the tiniest amount, so this is gonna last you a pretty long time. And it's e.l.f., so it's super affordable. In terms of foundations, I chose two, and I had a very, very hard time narrowing down my foundation choices because that is one thing I will say the drugstore is killing, has really, really stepped it up, is in the foundation department. I have probably the majority of my foundations that are drugstore that I'm obsessed with. Like at least half of my collection is drugstore foundations. They have just ugh, improved them so much. They're really, really good. Shade range is always improving, which I can so much appreciate. There's so much variety for all different skin tones, types, textures, you name it. But the two that are my personal favorite and I think are really, really great options for anyone would be the Maybelline Superstay. This one can be a little bit drying. So if you are on the drier side, I would recommend definitely having a really good skin prep or using a hydrating primer or something before going in with this. This lasts so freaking long. I think it's an amazing foundation. It makes you look flawless, airbrushed. It's very matte and I love this. Super affordable and they have a really good shade range. And then another one I wanna talk about is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This has been around for a while and people have been talking about it for a while and there's a reason. 
because it's amazing. It's very full coverage. I would say this is more of a satin to natural finish, whereas this one is definitely like a powder flat matte. So if you are on the dry side, you might like this option a little bit more. I actually used to carry this one in my kit and would use it on everyone and it was, it was fine. I just had to be careful with the base that I was laying down before applying this foundation. But this one I think is just an all around really, really good foundation. Good for dry, normal, oily skin types. The only thing I would warn you, this does smell like paint. It smells pretty potent. It's not an enjoyable scent, but I mean, the product itself is amazing. And I'm pretty sure these are like five or six dollars. So affordable. Shade range is like, mm, it's okay. I mean, they have a decent amount of shades, but sometimes it can be kind of hard to determine which one you need. And then another thing that I will just warn you guys about the applicator is kind of this spatula situation so not necessarily the most hygienic thing if you struggle with acne or bacterial breakouts or anything like that I would definitely recommend taking the spatula onto the back of your hand and applying from there you never want to take the spatula directly onto like infected areas or acne or anything like that because you're just going to contaminate this with all that bacteria and this entire product is just going to trap and save all that nastiness so just be aware of that. Likewise with concealers, I could not just pick one, so I have two really great options for you guys here. The LA Girl Pro Conceal is really, really awesome. These have been around, again, forever. They have kind of the brush tip. I'm not crazy about this packaging, I'm not gonna lie. But for the price, I mean, how mad can you be? I actually purchased these off Amazon and I ended up buying the entire shade range. I think it was like 50 bucks, which made these come out to like 50 cents a piece. There are a million and one shades. I love these for highlighting, contouring, whatever you need, spot concealing, very full coverage, awesome. Again, I used to keep these in my kit when I was like first, first starting out like three years ago. And I just loved it because they were super affordable and you could get so many shades. So if you have difficulty finding your shade, I would definitely check out this line because they are super accommodating with all of their different undertones and all that kind of stuff. They also have white, green, peach, all those correcting shades as well if that's something that you need. Then I have the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. This is kind of a newer product to the drugstore. I like this one. I don't think it's as full coverage as like Tarte Shape Tape or something like that, but I think that this one just blends out really, really nicely. It is medium buildable coverage, so don't get me wrong, this isn't like a sheer coverage. Like everybody is obsessed with the Maybelline Fit Me concealers. I just don't care for them at all. It's not really my cup of tea. It's a little bit too natural for me, but if you do like natural and a dupe for the NARS Radiant Creamy concealers, really great option there for you guys. Um, but I'm more of a full coverage like mask of makeup kind of gal. So I really, really love these. They are not overly drying. I would say they are very similar to the Too Faced multi-use sculpting concealers that I always rave about and love. Not as drying as a Tarte Shape Tape. It is a little bit more hydrating and it's not going to get as creepy on your under eyes. Really, really love this one. Super great option if you are looking for a dupe. So I chose the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder because I think this is a really good powder for any skin type. I do have other powders from the drugstore that I really, really love, but I love them because I'm kind of oily to combo, so I wanted to pick something that would work kind of for everyone. These are really, really great face powders. They come in multiple shades. It's just a loose powder, and I actually, it does come in a translucent shade, but I actually purchased mine in the shade 05 Fair. I like this because it has a little bit of a tint to it, so you're not gonna get like white flashback or anything like that. It's kind of almost like, not a banana, but like, you know, a light setting powder. I really like this. It makes you look super airbrushed. It's very lightweight, a very finely milled powder. And it says that it's actually a mineral-based formula, so if you struggle with certain skin concerns, this might be a really good option for you. You get a decent amount in here. This lasts a pretty, pretty long time. I like these to just set my T-zone and then just do a light dusting all around my face. And again, I would suggest this for the majority of skin types because it keeps me matte, but it's also not overly drying if you do have dry skin. Again, just makes you look very airbrushed and keeps everything set down all day long. For bronzer, you already knew this was coming. Don't even act surprised, I know. I'm not gonna talk about this for very, very long because this, you know, I mean, you already know, you just all, you like, you know, how can you not know? This is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is my number one bronzer choice of life, whether it be drugstore, high end, whatever, I don't care, this is all I want. It smells like the beach, it's amazing. I, 
every time I put this on my face, I, my mood just like instantly improves. Not to mention, it's such a beautiful formula. It's a butter bronzer. It's creamy. It's blendable. It's just pigmented and amazing. Like I literally cannot say enough good things about this product. It's so freaking beautiful. Now this thing that comes in the bottom, this, I don't know what you would do with this. I do not recommend using it. Um, so, I mean, if you want, go ahead. But I just really love these on like a nice big fluffy brush. It gives you that beautiful sun-kissed look. They do have a little bit of a sheen. I wouldn't say it's a shimmer. I don't like, well, I do like some shimmery bronzers, but it's just like a really pretty glow. It's not chunky glitter. You literally, I mean, you can't even really see if there's glitter in there. So don't be scared about that, but you can see it does have just like a little bit of a sheen such a beautiful product and the nice thing is that it does come in multiple shades now I have three of these and I actually stock these in my kit as well that's how much I love them I've said that before I know I really really love a product when I use it on myself and then I want to immediately put it in my freelance kit to use on everybody else as well not to mention when I apply this to people's faces they immediately are like what is that that smells so good and it just like improves the overall experience, you know? So I have Sunset Bronzer, which is a little bit more red toned. I have Deep Bronzer, which is the original shade that I purchased and like usually my like everyday kind of shade. Uh, Sunset is a little bit more red toned. So dependent on my self tan, I'll go in if I need a little bit more warmth. But I would say the Deep Bronzer is like your good neutral. And then I do have Sculpting Bronzer, which is pretty dark. So I will only use this if I'm like super, 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 super like freshly self-tanned. These are, I think, 10 to $15 per bronzer. A Little bit pricey for the drugstore. Price is kind of up there, but oh my God, they're just so freaking amazing. If you've never tried this, y'all have been waiting too long. Go get this right now. So I'm also not super crazy keen on drugstore contour kits, but this one I do actually really, really love. These are the Wet n Wild Contour Contouring Palette Contour, and I have mine in the shade Dulce de Leche. I actually purchased this a really, really long time ago, and then I repurchased it to use in a drugstore video and fell back in love with this. So these are kind of a two-pan duo, and they have another shade that I used to really, really love. This is the darker one, I believe. Um, the other one has kind of like a peachy pink setting powder and then like a more cool toned contour powder if that's what you're into. But these are just a really, really nice split pan. You have a brightening powder in here if you need it for your under eyes and your T-zone and then a really, really nice contour shade. These blend super, super easily. You get a ton of product. I mean, this thing is freaking huge. And Wet n Wild, as you know, is super affordable. And I find when you're first starting out with contouring and bronzing and all of that kind of stuff, it can be a little overwhelming to get a palette with like six different contour shades in it. I know when I was first starting, I had no idea which one to go in with. And I would only really use like one shade out of the entire palette, which is normally like a more cool tone shade to like contour my nose and just carve out my cheekbones a little bit. So this kind of takes the guesswork out of it. You either get the lighter contour one or you get the darker contour one. There's only two split pants you can't get confused you just have what you need for a lot of people just beginning less is more you want to have kind of a minimal collection play around with what you have learn with really simple products that you can't screw up and it's just gonna make your life so much easier so I think this takes the guesswork out of a lot of stuff it's really simple you can't mess it up you got two shades and you're done. Now for blushes, again, I have two options for you guys dependent on what you're into so I have this flower Beauty Flower Pots Powder Blush, geez. And this is in the shade Peach Primrose. And then I also have Milani Baked Powder Blushes. They're some of my favorites, but I wanted to give you two options because these Flower Beauty Blushes are really, really amazing if you're looking for a matte blush. If you do not enjoy shimmery blush or something with a sheen on your cheeks or anything like that, I would definitely recommend these. They're incredibly, incredibly pigmented. The color range is like, mm, I mean, it's decent, but when you're first starting out, you don't need 18 different shades of blushes. 
You just need one like universally flattering shade and you'll definitely be able to find it in this range. So I really, really like this one. It blends out really nicely. It's pigmented, it lasts. And then these Milani ones are, as you can see, they are baked with a little bit of shimmer in there. This one has kind of gold flecks in there mixed with like some bronzer. These are really, really pretty. I love this one is Berry Amore. And then of course I love Luminoso. You guys know that's one of my favorites. So if you like kind of like a more glowy complexion, if you like a little bit of shimmer in your blush, I think these are a really great option. They have very, I don't want to say muted because they're not muted colors, but they're very like flattering, pretty, like flush, just like natural looking colors, I guess. So I love all of their blushes. The formula is really nice. It's not chunky glitter or anything like that. It's just a really pretty sheen. Again, this one is Berry Amore and it's kind of like um, more mauve -y. I think this is really pretty on any skin tone. You can build it up for a darker skin tone or you can just go in with a really light wash of color. And I also really like this shade because it's not too warm, it's not too cool, so it's gonna look really good on a ton of different complexions. All right, let's talk about highlights. So you guys know, you guys know, Oh my god, you guys know, I'm obsessed with wet and wild highlighters. So I decided that in this video I needed to talk about something different and I'm actually glad that I chose this product because it has variety. When you purchase the wet and wild single highlights, you don't necessarily know if you're getting the right shade, you don't have a ton of variety, the shade that you buy is the shade that you're kind of stuck with. So I would recommend if you are looking for an amazing drugstore highlighter, you try out these Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette. So you are gonna get three beaming highlight shades in here. Sorry, my lights are a little bit bright, so you might not be able to see this in like great detail. So here you have kind of a champagne-y neutral highlight. You have a pink one, and then you have a darker gold. You're gonna have a really great range for all skin tones. You can use this if you're a little bit deeper, and you can go into this one if you're a little bit fairer. These are amazing creamy highlights. I know in the pan they look, I mean they look pretty metallic in the pan, but you're kind of like, mm, I don't really know about that. It seemed a little gimmicky to me with like the fake little brush that came in here that I always throw away. The packaging is like okay, it's not my favorite. It looks a little cheap to me, but what is inside is what matters, I mean. So these are not for the faint of heart. If you do not like a super, super dramatic highlight, go easy on these, okay? These are, I mean, like beaming highlights. They're very pigmented, very creamy, just a really amazing, beautiful formula. I think that this palette is just like an absolute home run. So let's talk eyeshadow. I struggle with eyeshadow from the drugstore. I am an eyeshadow snob, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very picky about my palettes because now that I have branched out in makeup, I have tested some really, really amazing palettes and I just can't go back now, you know? So I don't have any palettes from like drugstore, drugstore, like CVS or Walgreens that I really, really love. I mean, NYX is like fine. Makeup Revolution is okay. I don't really care for like Maybelline or any of those ones. If you have good palette recommendations from the drugstore, leave them down below. Let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. But like Milani wasn't blown away. Wet n Wild, like they're like little quad things. They're fine, but nothing like these. So I count these as drugstore because you get them on the drugstore side of Ulta. I know I'm cheating a little bit, but guys, I really, I had a hard time with this one, I'm not gonna lie. Same with like ColourPop has amazing shadows, but that's not like drugstore. But it is a drugstore price, so we're gonna count it. So the two palettes that I would really recommend to you guys if you are just starting out in makeup or dabbling, trying to get a little bit more bold, would be these two palettes. One is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, and then the second one is the Warrior by Juvia's Place. So I wanna talk about this one first. I am obsessed with Juvia's Place eyeshadows. These are some of my new, like, favorite recent discoveries. I actually have three of these in my freelance kit, again, if I put it in my kit, I know I really, really love it. These shadows, I mean, first of all, the pan size is massive. The only thing, I wish you did get a mirror in here, but whatever, it's fine. 
The pan size on these things is so huge. You get such beautiful colors. You can do a complete eye look with this. Whether you wanna do like a fun cut crease, which is actually what I did using this palette. I can link that video down below. Or if you just want like a little bit of a dusting of color in the crease and like a tiny shimmer on the lid. You have so many beautiful shades in this palette and they are so pigmented, creamy, just yummy, delicious, metallic, like, just such beautiful formula. I love Juvia's Place. I have the foundation I really, really love. Really like the eyeshadow palettes. And then I do have a contour blush palette from them as well. They are a little bit pricier for the drugstore. I think this guy runs about $18, 18 to $20. But recently these were put on sale. I think they're like nine or eleven dollars now so if you are interested in testing these out they do have sales frequently on the site and also at Ulta if you're overwhelmed with eyeshadows I think this is a really good one to start with you don't have a ton of mattes they blend very easily you don't have to work really hard on them you don't need fix plus for the metallics you don't need to spray them or apply them in a weird way you can literally go in with your finger it's so simple I mean they just I love these. And then for my people that are not quite like brand brand new, but like still pretty new to makeup, I would recommend the Jaclyn Hill palette. I mean, even if you're advanced, I highly recommend like all of these products. But I think this is a really good starter palette because it has literally everything in here that you would need. I say this is for my more like practiced beauty gal because there's a lot of shades in here and it can be very very overwhelming if you're just starting out you don't really know like what to do with like this section I totally get it but if you are branching out and looking to play with a little bit of color or anything like that I think this is an amazing palette as you can see mine is very well loved I actually have the original one she did change the packaging and stuff but just know it's the exact same palette no change in the formula or layout or anything like that I think these shadows are really pigmented they're nice this is the morphe shadow formula that I like some of their other palettes I have issues with we're not gonna you have a total complete eye look in this palette. That's one thing I always say when I'm reviewing a palette. Is this a one-stop shop? Is this all I need or do I need to dabble into other palettes? Is this just for colors? Do I only like this for two shades out of the entire thing? My favorite is when palettes literally give you every single thing you need, especially for like travel and things like that. I don't wanna dig out 300 different palettes just for one shade in each. I really like that this palette gives you a ton of shades and everything you need in one compact place. So uh, my least favorite thing to talk about would probably be like brows, eyeliners, and mascaras. I just think they're kind of boring, but we are doing a full face of drugstore stuff here, so we gotta cover them. So for brows, you already know I'm gonna say this. Again, not a big surprise here. The Catrice Slimatic Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. These are waterproof, amazing, amazing brow pencils. I think these are like better than Anastasia brow pencils. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's awesome. You get a spoolie. You can get so precise with these. I mean, they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Like you can really get in there. Love these. They're like five or six dollars. The only thing I would say, these are difficult to find. I have to order mine from Ulta and I order them in bulk because I can't always find them at the store and their shade selection kind of sucks for these. I'm not gonna lie. I think there's only like four shades, but I think they're really, really great. So this would be my number one recommendation. If you don't care for these, I would recommend going high end. I hate saying that, but I'm just not obsessed with a ton of brow products at the drugstore. For mascaras, I have two here. I used to be so diehard for this L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I would say it's a dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I mean, the packaging is literally the exact same. I think it's a really, really great mascara. If you like a lot of volume and kind of like a more chunky mascara wand, I think this is a really great option for you. They do make a, do they make a waterproof version of this? I think they make a waterproof version of this. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really love this mascara. And then the second one I wanna talk about is the Maybelline Colossal Big Shot. I have been using this nonstop. I thought I was gonna hate this because the brush is like bent and usually that's just like not my cup of tea at all. I just don't understand the point. This one is really, really nice, especially for your bottom lashes. This can get a little bit messy when I'm using it on my lower lash line just because the brush is so thick and it's kind of goopy. It like gives me the dots underneath. So I think this one is really, really easy to maneuver. I think the formula is amazing. I love the brush. This is a really, really good mascara option that not a ton of people talk about because everybody's like obsessed with the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. For liners, 
I don't have a ton of recommendations because I don't really wear like coal liner that often. I usually just go in with shadow. So if you want to skip the coal liner, if that's just like a step that's too much for you, just use shadow. It's the exact same thing. It's just a little bit softer. But if you are somebody that likes to go in with eyeliner on your waterline or anything like that, I would recommend the Maybelline Lasting Drama Eye Pencils, Eye Coals. These are super creamy, pigmented. I mean, like, look at that. That just like glides on. They don't have like the biggest color selection, but they do have a decent amount of colors if you're just looking for like a nice dark brown or a black or anything like that. I think these are amazing. You can also smudge them out really nicely if you're looking to do kind of a more smoky look or something like that. I really recommend these. And color wise, if you're looking to just purchase one, I would definitely recommend getting a dark brown rather than a black. Sometimes black can look a little bit harsh and you might not like it on yourself if you're not used to wearing such dark makeup. I would definitely go with a brown. It's a little bit softer and I think it's a little bit more wearable, especially if you have light eyes or if you have a very fair complexion, I would not go in straight with like black. But these are super easy to use. I love them. They're very beginner friendly because they don't tug at your waterline or anything like that. They don't make your eyes water. They're not uncomfortable. It's just one quick glide and it's like it's in there and it's not going anywhere. So. I love these for that. Now in terms of lashes, kind of like eyeshadow, I'm a little bit of a lash snob. Once you've tested out like faux mink and those kinds of lashes, like lily lashes and stuff, it's kind of hard to go back to using Ardell Wispies and Demi Wispies. Don't get me wrong, they're still a really, really great strip lash. I just don't like how fake they look sometimes. They have kind of a more blunt edge on the lash itself, so they don't look as like wispy or natural or fluffy, I would say. They look a little bit plasticky and fake sometimes. If you're like brand, 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 brand new to applying lashes, I think those are a great place to start. They have a ton of different styles and I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. Like I said, I'm just a lash snob and I prefer these because they look like faux mink and they look a little bit more expensive. So if that's the route you're going, then these are for you. If not, I would stick to your Ardell's. Absolutely nothing wrong with them. Keep applying those wispies, girl. They look great. But if you're kind of like, I wanna try the mink style lashes, but I don't wanna spend $30 on a pair of lashes because I just, I'm not there yet. Totally get it. These are for you. So the two pair I wanna talk about are the Eyelore Luxe Silk and then the Kiss Lash Couture. So I'm going to start with the Kiss Lash Couture because these are a little bit more natural. So both of these to me are pretty natural style lashes because I wear like the most obnoxious things on my eyeballs. So these are just super pretty and natural and they just look very wispy. When you apply these to the eye, they are just so beautiful and flirty and girly. I love these. These are in the style chiffon, and this is the Naked Drama Collection. And I'm pretty sure these are like $6. So they're a little bit, I mean, they're like the same as like Ardell's. I feel like that price went up. So you can get these at Walmart. You can get these at Ulta, CVS. Any place that sells Kiss products should have these. They're so lightweight, like the band is like basically invisible. I don't even wear eyeliner with these. You can just pop them right on and they blend seamlessly. It's very, very flexible and I like these because they kind of have that like split lash situation going on so you get kind of double the volume. It almost looks like they're stacked and they just look really wispy and natural and beautiful. These are like my lash extension lashes. Like if you like the look of lash extensions but don't wanna get them, try these because they look very, very similar. And then for something a little bit more bold. These are the Eyelore Silk Effect Lashes in Marquee, I believe is the style that these are in. So you can see I've actually used these ones. Sorry, I didn't have a new pack, but these are just really beautiful, like voluminous, like just full doll lashes. I think these are really complimentary on like round eyes. I mean, all almond eye shapes, you can wear them too. I would just trim them down a little bit, but if you've round eyes, I think these complement your eye shape so beautifully beautifully. They're fluffy. They're very comfortable to wear. Again, this lash band is super, super thin. Like you're not going to have a hard time putting these on, I don't think. 
I wear these without eyeliner as well. The lash band is pretty thin on this. It's not like Ardell Wispies thin, but it is still very thin. They're easy to put on. They're gentle when you take them off. You can wear them with contacts, any of that stuff. One thing I will say, if you are applying lashes and you are new to applying lashes, when you are applying your lash, first of all, you gotta trim them to make sure that they fit your eye. They Nothing should be stabbing your inner corner. They should not be uncomfortable to wear. You should essentially not feel them on your eyes at all. Make sure that you trim from the outer corner always because the inner corner is usually shorter to kind of give that more natural effect. If you start trimming from the inner corner, you're gonna just have like chunks and it's gonna look very fake. So to kind of get that seamless blend, always trim from the outer corner in. And then when you're applying your lash glue, I would apply your lash glue and it says to wait about 30 seconds. I wait almost an entire minute. You want it to be essentially dry. Well, you don't want it to be dry, but you want it to be about 10 seconds from being dry. I can usually tell when my lash glue is not white anymore, but it's starting to go like a little bit clear on my lash band. That's when I will start applying them because they just stick in place. And then I usually start pop it on the middle and then just tack down each corner. Give them a quick squeeze to blend with your lashes and they're not gonna go anywhere. The longer you wait, well obviously, don't, again, don't wait until they're like bone dry, but be patient. Usually when you think they're dry and ready to put on, they're not quite dry yet. I always encourage newbies to wait a little bit longer to let their lash glue dry. That way it's just so easy to put on. When you go to lift your tweezers off, it's not gonna pull the lash off. It's not gonna be popping off in any corner or anything like that. It's just gonna stay put perfectly where you placed it. So you definitely want your lash glue to be nice and tacky. That's my tip for applying lashes. If you guys wanna see a video on how I apply my lashes with and without liner, all of that kind of stuff, how I apply really thick bands, how I apply natural lashes, how I do individuals, let me know. I can definitely film that. Um, let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you're interested in. I was thinking about starting a whole beginner series on my channel where I kind of go through like beginner skills, like how to fill in your brows, how to apply lashes, how to overline your lips, how to do a cream contour, any of that kind of stuff. If you're interested in seeing a really in-depth breakdown of like one thing that I do, let me know. I'm happy to film that. I'm here to help you guys. Next up, I wanna talk about lip liners. So I have two lip liners here that their formula is my absolute favorite and I need to find the other one because I used it today. Okay, here we go. So the first one is a NYX lip pencil, which you guys know I've talked about till I'm blue in the face. I'm noticing a lot of these things I've mentioned multiple times on my channel already. So I'm really sorry if you're getting sick of this. The one shade specifically though that I recommend is Nude Truffle. I think this is a really pretty mid-tone nude shade. It can be worn brown or it can be worn more pink. This would be a really nice like everyday nude on a deeper skin tone and on a lighter skin tone, it's kind of a darker nude, obviously. So I think this is a really, really great shade, kind of a staple. And then if you're looking for that like pale, pale nude, I would recommend the Essence number 11 in the nude lip liner. These are so creamy. This one's a little bit pinkier, but it's just that really, really light nude. This is like my Kim K nude, I would say, that almost like pale, like flesh tone. This formula is super amazing. They're very similar, I would say. And for pencil liners, these guys are so freaking creamy. Normally, I don't like wooden pencil liners because they're just so drying, but these are so, so creamy. And these Essence ones, I'm pretty sure are like $2. $2. It's so affordable. Shade... And the NYX lip liners come in so many colors, like an obnoxious amount of colors. These are really, really awesome. And then these don't come in a ton of colors, but I have like a red, a pink, really, really nice, really, really nice creamy formula, very comfortable. You can even use this all over your lips and top with like a chapstick or a gloss and you're good to go. So like everything else for lipsticks, I have two options, well, technically three options, but two options just dependent on the kind of lip you like to wear. So the first thing I wanna talk about are liquid lipsticks because that's my favorite formula. I do recognize that these can be a little bit daunting though for people that are just starting out because it's very hard to get like a precise line. You need a lot of practice. It can go uneven, a little bit patchy. I get it, trust me. But I love these because you don't have to reapply. They last a really long time and once it's on, it's on. 
So the two I wanna talk about are the Morphe liquid lipsticks. I just recently talked about this in a favorites video for 2019, so I'm not gonna go into like huge in depth. This is the shade Virgin specifically though. I would really recommend this if you're looking for a really pretty nude. This is like a true liquid lipstick. They have a few other shades, not a great shade range, but these are really, really affordable, a very comfortable formula to wear. You literally cannot go wrong with this. It's so beautiful my most used shade in my freelance kit for sure. It's super pretty for brides if that's something that you're interested in. And then the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams, I have the shade London and then Cape Town. These are my two favorite shades specifically. I chose like pretty much all nudes for this video because I think nudes are obviously the most beginner friendly. There's a ton of shades in these matte lip creams. So if you're interested in trying out like an orange or something like that, they've got it for you, don't worry. So this is the shade London up top here and then Cape Town is underneath. They are so, so similar, but London I would say is a little bit more warm toned and then Cape Town is kind of like a pinkier nude. So there's two really great options there. If you don't like how drying a liquid lipstick is on your lips, I would give these a try because they dry to kind of like, I mean, it's still matte, but it's more of like a creamy velvet matte finish. These don't last as long on me as like a normal liquid lipstick does, but I think that you still can get really good wear time out of these and they're very, very comfortable. If you're more of a bullet lipstick gal, I really like these Maybelline lipsticks. You can get a ton of different finishes in a ton of different shades. They have cream, they have gloss, they have matte. I prefer the matte ones just because I'm a matte lipstick gal and if I want gloss, I'll top it. But these nude ones are probably my favorite. I have Toasted Truffle and then Nude Nuance here. They're just really pretty, like nice mid-tone nude shades. These are a little bit darker, um, but I like pretty deep nudes. So those are them there. Really pretty formula, very comfortable even though they're matte. I think these are a great dupe for MAC lipsticks, honestly. They're not as drying. I think they're a little bit more comfortable than MAC matte lipsticks. And then a shade that I think everybody needs in their collection, regardless of who you are, your makeup style, whatever, is Baddest Beige. And this is their Shine formula. I love this color. So this is Baddest Beige down here. I think this is such an incredible, I'm just, like, look how shiny and glossy that is. I love this as a nude lip topper. If I wanna wear a gloss, but I'm like concerned about wind, like my hair getting caught in my lip gloss, or I'm just like, I don't want like another layer of like goopy, sticky mess on my lips, I will reach for this. This is a really pretty lip topper, or I really like this on its own as kind of like a tinted lip balm kind of situation. Really creamy, very comfortable to wear. I will warn you, that these are fragranced, so just be wary of that. They're sweet, I mean, they smell like Maybelline lipsticks, like you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've ever smelled one, but I think they're really beautiful lipsticks, very affordable. This one I have in each one of my purses and I just leave it in there indefinitely, so it's always in there in case I need it. And then I did just wanna talk about one gloss that I really, really like from the drugstore is the NYX Lip Lingerie Glosses, and this is in the shade Sable specifically. I really love this color. Look at that, this is it right here. These are some of the most pigmented, amazing glosses out there. They're super comfortable to wear. They are pretty thick though, I would warn you. Another one from NYX that is really amazing that I love are the NYX Butter Glosses. There's a bunch of shades in that. So this is my favorite shade of the Butter Lip Gloss. I have a few of them, but this one in particular, oh yes. This is in the shade Tiramisu. It's the pink one up here. Y'all, when the Kylie Jenner lip was like a thing, this was my go-to like mauve glossy lip. I love it. I would say the butter glosses are a little bit thinner. I would say just as opaque and pigmented, but the formula is a little bit thinner. So if you're a little bit nervous to try like a thick, creamy like gloss gloss like this, then I would recommend one of the butter glosses. They're just a little bit more comfortable to wear, I think. And to conclude this video, I did have to pick out a setting spray for you guys. This is not a requirement by any means, but I think it's just something nice to have if you are looking for a drugstore setting spray. My favorite is the L'Oreal Infallible Makeup Extender Setting Spray. This is the Pro Spray and Set. I really like this because the mist on it is just glorious. 
it's not going to camel spit all over your face and ruin your makeup when you're at that last step and it's just like heartbreaking. This is a super fine spritz. It sets your makeup really nicely and you use this as your last step. Of course, it's a setting spray. I'm not in love with the scent of this. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a very interesting scent. I don't really know how to describe it, but I mean, it's good. I think it works really, really well as a setting spray. I used to use this religiously in college and it survived a lot of frat parties. So I think it's pretty good. It's an oil-free formula. Just make sure that you're holding your spritz out here. What I like to do is kind of spray it in the air and then I'll like move into it as ridiculous as that sounds. But just to make sure that it's ultra fine, doesn't disturb anything on your makeup. And yeah, I think this is a really good one. And I'm pretty sure this is about $14. Alrighty, you all. So I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. Like I said, this is a full face. You can, of course, take or leave what you don't want. I think if you're looking to go with just the necessities, you can leave out the eyeshadow palettes, the lashes, the gloss, the liner. Those are not necessities, but I did want to give you guys options for all of those things. If you are looking for something drugstore in that category, I just wanted to share some of my favorites with you guys. I think these shades specifically and these products are great for beginners out there. If you're looking for just like soft, neutral, just everyday makeup, I think these are some really great options for you guys. It's nothing super over the top, but it does give you the versatility to kind of build and make it a little bit more bold if you're trying to take a look from like day to night or if you just wanna play around a little bit. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys are interested in some more videos and tips for beginners or people out there that are just diving into makeup very very exciting welcome welcome to the dark side I'm very excited so as always if y'all enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video